St. Ambrose. As I told the people at the 9 a.m. service, y'all look good for 145 years. We praise God for this wonderful weather. Last week, the weatherman said it would be raining. And what did I say? 72 and sunny. Thanks be to God. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God, Jesus, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what our Lord Jesus Christ saith. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets.
Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who in Christ has revealed thy glory among the nations, Preserve the works of thy mercy, that thy church throughout the world may persevere with steadfast faith in the confession of thy name. Through the same Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. Let's take it from Jeremiah 31, chapters 27 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will sow the house of Israel and the house of Judah with the seed of humans and the seed of animals. And just as I have watched over them to pluck up and break down, to overthrow, destroy, and bring evil, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, says the Lord. In those days they shall no longer say, the parents have eaten sour grapes, and the children's teeth are set on edge. But all shall die for their own sins. The teeth of everyone who eats sour grapes shall be set on edge. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. The word of the Lord. second reading comes from Timothy chapter 3 verse 14 and chapter 4 verse 5. As for you continue in what you have learned and firmly believed, knowing from who you learned it and how from childhood you have known the sacred writings that are able to instruct you for salvation through faith in Christ Jesus. All scripture is inspired by God and is useful, useful for teaching for reproof, for correction, for training in righteousness, so that everyone who belongs to God may be proficient, equipped for every good work. In the presence of God in Christ Jesus, who is to judge the living and the dead, and in view of his appearing in view of his appearing and his kingdom, I solemnly urge you, proclaim the message, be persistent whether the time is favorable or unfavorable, convince, rebuke, and encourage with the utmost patience and teaching. For the time is coming when people will not put up with sound doctrine. But having itching ears, they will accumulate for themselves teachers who suit their own desires and will turn away from listening to the truth and wander away to myths. 
As for you, always be sober, endure suffering, do the work of an evangelist, carry out your ministry fully. The word of the Lord. a parable about their need to pray always and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor had respect for people. In that city there was a widow who kept coming to him and saying, grant me justice against my opponent. For a while he refused, but later he said to himself, though I have no fear of God and no respect for anyone, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will grant her justice so that she may not wear me out by continually coming. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God grant justice to his chosen ones who cry to him day and night? Will he delay in helping them? I tell you, he will quickly grant justice to them. And yet, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on earth? The Gospel of the Lord. and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. And you may be seated. I'm Father Joe Green. I've been here before. <laughs> Not 145 years ago, <laughs> but some portion of him. I have been away from Raleigh for 60 years. My goodness. But I've, I've, I've been coming back and forth so many times and having a great relationship with Father Calloway, my college classmate, my seminary roommate, and my friend for so many years. And, so we know the city, 
and we both came to know these people. It's a great day. Uh, yes, it sun is shining. Why are you doing a job up there? <laughs> I mean, heating is up. You know, you, you, God, you're good. Amen. You're supposed to preach from the gospel mostly, or at least from the lessons that are set before you. I'm not going to do any of that. I'm going to preach from a text I think that might fit this occasion. It's from Genesis 28, 16, 17. And Jacob woke from sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place. Well, And I did not know it. And he was afraid and said, How awesome is this place. This is none other than the house of God. This is our gate to heaven. This, said Ambrose, is the house of God. It is our gate to heaven. How awesome is this place. A little story before I get into the meat of the text. When we left here and went to Raleigh, there, there's a good connection between the cities. Uh, and we ended up over in Newport News, which is just across a body of water, across a body of water. And to the home of May Scott and her family. May is the daughter of the Hamlins from Raleigh. And so my wife, this is her story really, was speaking to May Scott and she said, I want you to meet my mother. And she took her over to introduce her to Mrs. Hamlin. My wife said, when we were in Raleigh, we knew some Hamlins. Do you know the Hamlins from Raleigh? And she straightened up and said, I am the Hamlins from Raleigh. <laughs> the family you know well, a name you know well. Her grandson, Bobby Scott, is my congressman. A great family with a great tradition in that city of Newport News and what May Scott brought to that city through her family. Oh, there are many other stories about her, I could tell you, but then we wouldn't have time for anything else and I must get on with this message about Jacob. We're interconnected people. Met May Scott in Newport News, Virginia. Related to the Hamlins in Raleigh. Here we are related again by God's grace to that place where Jacob lay down and went to sleep and found God in a dream. And he knew, woke and knew that he was in a different kind of place. There was a presence here, a presence that he did not recognize in any other place that he had been. He was afraid and said, this is an awesome place. Churches are awesome places. So I know all of you are Bible reading and Bible speaking people, so I don't really need to refresh your memory that much, but in case you forgot, 
let, let's go back a little ways to introduce you to Jacob. There's Abraham and Sarah. Those names you know well. They didn't have any children. Abraham went out with his slave and had a child named Ishmael. But there was no children born to Abraham and Sarah. And God blessed them. And in their old age, he sent them a son by the name of Isaac. It's amazing how much we know about Abraham and Sarah and the great preparation that for this child. And there's so little in the Bible about Isaac. All Isaac is is can do it till we get to Jacob. Isaac marries and has a set of twins, Esau and Jacob. And in some unfair way, and we debated this in the Bible classes and in arguments for years, it's kind of unfair the way that Jacob treated Esau. And Jacob ends up with Isaac's blessing. And he's got to get out of town. And he leaves and on the way, he's a tired man. He's probably been running for a while. And he lay down to sleep. And as he lay down to sleep, he had a dream. And in his dream, he saw angels ascending and descending and gave us a great spiritual. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder. We are climbing Jacob's ladder, soldiers of the cross. In Jacob's dream, we should become our dream. We both know that God is in and can get, and we can get to him and he to us. We get to him through a ladder which reaches from heaven to earth and angels that going up and down it and what do they represent at least for me in this story these are our prayers these are prayers to God God listens God answers and we say amen so what do we do in this place? We pray. That's what you do in church. In our prayers, we send a message to God. All oh, the number of prayers on that ladder, it's gotta be a stout ladder. <laughs> I know it's a stout ladder because I had a bunch of them going up there myself. So much so he's sent some answers back and enabled me to be here today even though I'm 87 years old. That's a tough ladder. We have seen prayers for our sake. For our bereaved. It's a ladder that has to carry a heavy load. Some prayers are laden with grief and sorrow, even pain. And so the answers come back from God. And God has answered. And he's answered the prayers of St. Ambrose for 145 years. God has sent you messengers, St. Ambrose. He said, you relief from your pain. 
He's heard our prayers and helped us baptize our children. Bury our dead. He sent us a house of worship. We'll go there later today. And all things necessary to carry out our ministries. St. Ambrose, you have great ministries. God has not only sent us great leaders who bless not only the congregation of St. Ambrose, but the city of Raleigh. I would be remiss if I did not mention the leadership of Father Arthur Calloway at the church and in the city. Where would the civil rights movement be and the integration of the public schools of the county if it were not for the K's and not only the K's all the other people from this congregation who participated in that great movement to integrate this city and help it become a greater city Ye, we have prayed to God and God has answered. This is our place, this is our Beth El, our house of God. And what do we do in this place? We pray. In this St. Ambrose, we pray. When he awoke from sleep, Jacob said, Surely the Lord is in this place. And I did not know it. And he was afraid. How awesome is this place? This is not other than the house of God. And this is the gate of heaven. Then he took that same stone that had been his pillow. Tough to think of a stone as a pillow. But it was a big rock, so... He could lay up against it. But when he woke, he took that same stone and set up something that has a meaning forever. He built an altar. Altars represent the presence of God. What do we do at the altar of St. Ambrose? The most important act we do is to celebrate through the Eucharist as we will do today. In this celebration, the bread and wine is blessed by the priest and we are fed the body and blood of Christ. The altar represents the presence of God. What else do we do at the altar? Where's Evelyn? She's, my wife here somewhere, isn't she? <laughs> she always hides. All the other ministers' wives I know sit on the front row or near the front. Evelyn has always sat in the back. 58 years ago, Evelyn and I said our vows at the altar of St. Matthew's Church in Savannah, Georgia. 58 years. At the altar, we make our vows. At the altar, we confirm our children and adults who come to us. At the altar, we say prayers for those who are sick and pray for the sick at the altar. We ask God's blessing in a service always available, seldom used, the sacrament of penance, where we say to God, I'm sorry, forgive me.
at the altar. Our tradition is for the priest to sit inside the altar and the penitent kneels at the altar rail. At the altar, we confess our sins. We are an altar-centered church. Wherever you go in this communion, and it is worldwide, you will find the altar at the center. Whether it be at the Cathedral of St. John the Divines in New York, or St. Paul's in London, out of St. Ambrose in Raleigh. It is the center of our worship. But we are a church not only just of this world. This church of ours is also our gate to heaven. Jacob did not leave us a description of how we would get to heaven. He just left us the word, gate. We will get to heaven through the gate that has been opened to us through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. The last time I was at St. Ambrose was through the burial of Father Calloway. And we could talk about that gate in a more personal way then. We were not bearing, we were now bearing, my friend, your priests for whom the gate of heaven is open through the same Jesus whom he proclaimed in sermons and his example of life and his message that all of us are one in Christ Jesus. The church was able to say goodbye and was assured through words. Bishop preached a great sermon, choir sang the hymns. We have some great hymns. Earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. We have great scriptures. We've got prayers galore. You can have a prayer any place you go at the time someone's part. And nothing can touch the prayers that we have in our book of common prayer. In addition to the Lord's prayer, it's always there. And even at the end, we can say, Depart, O Christian soul, out of this world in the name of God the Father, who created you, in the name of Jesus Christ, who redeemed you, in the name of the Holy Spirit, who sanctified you. May your rest this day be in peace, and your dwelling place in the paradise of God. At the altar, those prayers are offered. On his way back, after his marriage to his wives, Jacob had another prayer. These stories actually get combined sometime. But this time he wrestles with an angel and according to the scripture, it was a pretty good match. The angel had to do a trick on David in order to get him down. But in his wrestling, he said, Jacob did, I will not leave you till you bless me. The angel said, you no longer will be called Jacob. You will be called Israel. That name continues today 
and the people we call Jews. They have been around for a long time and I see no evidence that they will, won't be around, but to the contrary, they will be around for a long time to come. St. Ambrose, you've been around for 145 years. That's a long time. And all the evidence point to your being around for a long time to come. Say in prayers, performing your ministries, bearing your dead. May God bless you. Father Taylor, may God bless your ministry and all of you who serve God. May God bless you. May God bless you. Amen. I believe in one God. memories of those whose wisdom and love have a love established this church particularly 
the Reverend J. Brighton Smith and the Reverend e. J. E. King, and whose faith and steadfast glory you through its life. For those who laid the foundations of this household of faith, we give thanks. Make vivid to us the glorious victories that have been won in our name and the continuing fellowship which has revealed your spirit through these years. For this rich inheritance of the Church of Jesus Christ, we give thanks. Crown our joy in this hour with a fresh awareness of the vast company of Christians who shared our celebrations and who urge us to yet gather achievements in Christ's name. For those who make common cause with us, we give thanks. with an ever-increasing knowledge of truth and with an ever-growing awareness of need. Give us a more generous spirit for the assurance of new opportunities to serve you better. We give thanks. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come, renew our faith and increase our strength. May we be worthy recipients of past blessings and ready helpers in tasks that lie ahead. Come, Lord Jesus, empower and hold our church to your heart. Lord, Unite us in common commitment to the Lordship of Jesus Christ, that the world may see our dedication to follow your teachings and to fulfill your will for his church for this church may your kingdom and your will be done in splendid perfect fellowship continue to guide us in the future as you have in the past let us humbly confess our sins unto almighty god most merciful god we confess that we have sinned against thee in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved thee with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of thy Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may make life in thy will and walk in thy ways. To the glory of thy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the word of God to all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, all ye that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. My brothers and sisters, the peace of the Lord be always with you. We have not gathered in worship since 1965. I want to thank Father Joe Green. I didn't know you were 87. I thought you were a bit younger. But glad, thank you for your sermon. And for this illustration of the altar. So I had uh, St. Ambrose use the original altar. So I know this altar goes back to at least 1900. And I think it goes back to 1879. So this altar 
has been at all three St. Ambrose locations. Dawson and Lane, Wilmington and Cabarrus, and at our current church in the chapel. So a lot of prayers have been prayed at this office. And thank you for your illustration. Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us an offering and sacrifice to God.
offer this Holy Communion to the greater glory of God and thanksgiving for 145 years of ministry for all the faint of all the saints who have gone before us and all the people who have prayed here and continue to pray for us. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto Thee. O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, Everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave, and by His glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify the high glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, to thee, almighty God, our heavenly Father, for that thou of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute, and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death and sacrifice until his coming again. For in the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, 
For this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Wherefore, O Lord and Heavenly Father, according to the institution of thy dearly beloved Son, our Savior Jesus Christ, we, thy humble servants, do celebrate and make here before thy divine majesty with these thy holy gifts, which we offer now unto thee, the memorial thy Son hath commanded us to make, having in remembrance his blessed passion and precious death, his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, rendering unto thee most hearty thanks for the innumerable benefits procured unto us by the same. And we most humbly beseech thee, O merciful Father, to hear us, and of thy almighty goodness, vouchsafe to bless and sanctify with thy word and Holy Spirit these gifts and creatures of bread and wine, that we, receiving them according to thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. And we earnestly desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseeching thee to grant that, by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy whole church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and living sacrifice unto thee, humbly beseeching thee that we and all others who shall be partakers of this holy communion may worthily receive the most precious body and blood of thy Son, Jesus Christ, be filled with thy grace and heavenly benediction, and made one body with him that he may dwell in us and we in him. And although we are unworthy through our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, Yet we beseech thee to accept this our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses through Jesus Christ our Lord. By whom and with whom, in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honor and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. And now, as our Savior Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say.
Christ, our Passover, a sacrifice for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank Thee for that Thou dost feed us in these holy mysteries with the spiritual food of the most precious body and blood of Thy Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and thus to assure us thereby of Thy favor and goodness towards us, and that we are very members in corporate in the mystical body of Thy Son, the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of Thy everlasting kingdom. And we humbly beseech Thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with Thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship and do all such good works as Thou hast prepared for us to walk in, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with Thee and the Holy Ghost be all honor and glory, world without end. Amen. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you this day and remain with you always. Amen. Let us go forth in peace to serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.